Hello, I am Tom. Hello, this is Deflating Atheism here. Hey, this is Max Kobe with the Escaping Atheism Project. All right, and welcome to our fifth po fifth podcast. My last one was to contain my old friend Mike, who was a uh, instructor at a very high school that was uh, helping me with a few videos on R and R and Messianic Automatic. And I said in that last video, we're going to do a response to the Rational Channel and Messianic Automatic response to Inspiring Philosophies: Is Atheism a Delusion? And before we start, I just wanted to say that this the videos right here probably is the pinnacle towards my life where I decided to look closely at theism and sort of converted into that. And upon this, this is also where I found atheists to do nothing more than quote mind and use red herrings and just don't actually use any science or reasoning whatsoever. So, so far, this video is just gonna just contain a bunch of fallacies that we'll just go over. And deflating atheism and uh, escaping atheism, right, what did you think of uh, Spiral Philosophy's videos on atheism being delusion? It, it, it's interesting, yeah. It, go, it goes into what Max is always saying, is that, is that, is that theism is, is very natural. And, and it's, it is abnormal. Atheism is, is abnormal. So, so it, it's difficult for atheists to kind of point towards uh, an a theism as being an abnormality. The truth right. is that when I was an atheist, I was an atheist for a very, very long time. Um, uh, it was truly just beginning to wonder if there was something wrong with me because I didn't inhabit a bubble where everybody was atheist with me, you know. I, I and and but I, you know, in online circles and whatnot, I, I got to know atheism pretty well, and I, I noticed a bunch of what I would call aberrant behavior. Um, aberrant behavior I still notice whenever atheists cluster in groups, especially for any kind of, you know, identitarian purposes, mm. including the weird fact that they will sometimes cluster together for identitarian purposes while denying they are doing so. One of several weird things about the current cultural atheist phenomenon. Anyway, um, to get back to it, yeah, I, I had questions. In observing atheist behavior and my own mindset, I, I began wondering if something was just wrong with my thinking. And uh, over the course of my investigations, yeah, I, I came to conclude it was rational to believe there was a God. Um, um, but that's, that eventually led me further further down the road, and I've only grown more confidence with with time. So mm. I do think it's natural for most people to have a sense of God. And we have clear evidence in the scientific literature that a certain subset of, of, of children, of young people, lack it, lack an intuitive sense of God, um, and, and so may need help being rationally guided to understanding the concept. Because whether you understand, you know, whether you accept or reject the concept, you ought to at least understand it. And a lot of people, especially people with like Asperger's, uh, autism, uh, I think also ADHD, my casual observation is that it's true in ADHD too. Something yeah. zones them in and they lose that, that intuitive, yeah, this isn't all just running itself kind of feeling that, that is pretty natural in most humans. Um, and then if you lack that, then if you lack any intuitive uh, sense of that, then... It's a pretty reasonable conclusion that when one looks at the world, that, that it probably has a creator and designer. That, that's not an unreasonable conclusion, just on the face of it. Now, if you start talking about an invisible man in the sky or some straw man like that, yeah, then, then I, I would certainly you know, say that that's not a reasonable conclusion. But just saying that the natural world, as we know it, as a creator and designer, is ju just, it just seems natural. Yeah, but you know, I flinch at that, and, and that's where I actually sometimes draw the Asperger's, ADHD kind of maybe connection, because that to me, when you phrase all that that way, to me, this is how my brain interprets it, I immediately sort of start kind of autistically going to the question of exactly the point in time uh, where it begins and the mechanisms by which change occur, rather than dialing back, which is what I needed to do, and say, okay, why is any of this shit going that way in the first place? You know, why are the laws of physics and probability going at all? And when, when that clicked into me, I was able to say, okay, maybe something intelligence running all this. Yes, yes. And, I mean, and it, that's what busted me out, and I went, oh, okay, that's a rational idea. 
um, and then I could got more curious after that about other things, you know, yes. spiritual. It is similar to my philosophy class when I was didn't know which side to take on, you know, and when I was thinking about if theism is true and looking more to it, a bunch of people who were you know, anti-religious was saying, no, it can't be true no matter what I say, even if I was looking up some, you know, reasonable explanations. And it got me to be curious, too. Could it be that these people who are, you know, anti-religious and people who are against Christianity, it's because they're denying something that is obviously true, that is in our senses, and turns out it, it looks like it, you know? I mean, yeah, once you, once, you, once you see it and start analyzing, see, I actually have a theory that we're in a unique time period in history um, atheists have always been around as a sort of natural phenomenon, right? Um, but clustered in large groups where they, they engage in intellectual endeavors together, we've never been able to observe that in action. And we can observe it in action now, and lo and behold, it's extraordinarily interesting to observe, including the fact that, yes, they frequently look like people in rabid denial of a simple proposition. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, and some of it looks indoctrinated, and some of it looks like confusion. And it's sometimes hard to tell the difference, but I'm convinced anybody who's basically been overly influenced by cultural Marxism in the education system uh, will have been indoctrinated in materialist assumptions, and, and that almost instantly makes you an atheist. I mean, yes, in theory, you can be a materialist and a theist, um, somehow the Mormons manage it, for example. Or and in theory, you can be, you know, you can also believe in things in like reincarnation, and but not God. But at some level, you're just playing games there. You know, if you're an atheist, you think one way, and if you believe in God, you think very differently. Right, I remember we were talking about this before, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've, I've known an atheist who was a friend of mine who, he, he didn't believe in any kind of gods, but he was spiritual and believed in like reincarnation, like the supernatural, which was kind of funny to me. It was a. Uh, I would merely ask him. I'm just. I'm just straight up and say, do, do you think that there are spirit forces that are beyond human power or ability? And and if he says yes, he says well, then then you, I would point out. Well, then you believe in gods at least. You're a rough, rough sort of polytheist. Right. I think well, almost all of them will cop to that. Everybody I know who's been, you know, I'm not religious, but I like to believe in reincarnation. They'll almost all cop to believing in higher spiritual forces if they believe in reincarnation. If they believe in higher spiritual forces, they really are polytheists. Yeah. They just hang out the word atheist. But yeah. even, even if you grant the, um, we're getting off topic here, even if you grant oh, yeah. the existence of, the, of these spirit forces kind of like buzzing around the material world, all you have are, are two different kinds of just contingent things just moving on their own accord for no particular reason at all. The fact that there is a first cause that that put all these contingent temporal things into place in the seems like an infinitely more reasonable assumption. E Maybe. Even even just materialism or or, or or kind of the value added materialism of people who believe in reincarnation on top of you know the the, the atheistic uh, uh, non materialists. This is why even this is why even the you know the advanced Hindus have an idea of what we would roughly call God. Yes, um, they do have the advanced ones almost always do. Um, Vishnu who dreams the universe, so he, we're we're in Vishnu's dream, or some sometimes it's the Brahma's dream. It tends to, it's a much more remote idea of God, a lot closer mm -hmm. to Aristotle's. Not super interested in us apparently, you know, but the the base idea, the big mind that's running it all. Part of Hindu theology too. Yeah. Well, you know, um, maybe we should save this uh, discussion after we get done with the videos. Like, is that sure. is that okay? Yeah. 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 Okay. Let's uh, let's start with the videos, anyways. Um, we'll start with the rational channel. And to be honest, these guys, you know, out of all the atheists, I think these guys really like tick me off the most. I don't know why. It's just something about them. Just really. The pretense of rationality, maybe. <laughs> well, I mean, I know there's dumb ones out there like anti season X and Bionic Dance, you know, and really dumb ones, but there's something about these is just, I think, when they made the response to IP and to show how dishonest they are and people buying into what they believe in, yeah. I couldn't believe it. And I, I put comments on their, you know, video showing them, you know, you're, you're basically lying and then they won't admit it. And I can't believe how many people are listening to this. But later on, I've noticed a lot of people are now the newest comments. They're now realizing they're lying and they're moving away from that. And I, and I, I know you put some down there yourself, escaping atheism. Uh, like, 
there's a, I think you one I commented on that you were talking about how dishonest the rational channel were. <laughs> Could be. Uh, I don't remember making the comment, to be honest. I see so much atheist stupid. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I literally barely keep them all apart, except the ones. Uh, Godless Cranium, I still owe him a response video. He's really not that bad. <laughs> Um, so I still want to do him, but, but a lot of these atheist channels are so awful. It's just like, why am I even here? I'll just leave a snarky comment and leave. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry. But. It, yeah, I don't, I don't think they're really that threatening, but the reason why I like to make these videos is that it need, they need to be you know, shown and point out that they're full of it and they're making yeah. up yeah. shit all the time. So, yeah. so yeah. Uh, let's, let's get on with uh, the first response right here. All right. <sighs> Now, we won't be, there's actually been a response battle with these guys and Inspiring Philosophy, and I didn't want to show all these views because it would be one hell of a podcast, too yeah. long. So so for anyone who hasn't seen this, I would advise that to go watch Inspiring Philosophy's videos on Is Atheism an Illusion to lead up to this part, all right? Yeah. So we're just going to be doing the... Links are in the description, yeah. Yeah, right. Links in the description, and uh, well, you know... I might put them on there, I might not. You just go, the people could just look it up themselves. But yeah, so we're just going to be doing the latest response that the Rational Channel made to Inspiring Philosophy. And we already seen Inspiring Philosophy's response to this. So let's get on with it. Oh, shoot. I'm sorry, I accidentally muted my mic on my side. Sorry. Here. Sorry about that. Rather than doing a point-by-point -point response, which we think would wind up being overly confusing, we will just quickly outline a few problems with this response. Now, his primary defense is that he was only referring to a specific definition of delusion as opposed to the general usage of the word, as you can see in this clip here. Merriam-Webster defines a delusion as either a belief that is not true, which is the broader use of the term, or a false idea or belief that is caused by a mental illness. Before we outline the primary issue with his defense, I would just like to make a point regarding these definitions. The definition he has chosen to show still states that a delusion is a false belief caused by mental illness. This doesn't fit his defense of claiming that delusion is simply something that occurs as a result of abnormal brain function or mental illness, because both definitions he shows and all the definitions we have found have one common factor, and that is a false idea or belief. Any brain slippery. function results in a false idea. Mm, what was that? Slippery, slippery, gish galloping, weaselly. These are the terms I'm already studying. First off, did you not tell me that these guys claim to be neurologists? Well, you know, I, some, let's just say a friend was telling me about that, some information, and then when I was sending, uh, talking to them a few times, they, I think they mentioned something like that, they had to go into work in, in the morning and had to do something. Uh, I don't know, you know, I, I'm just okay. doing that from memory. Well, I would have to go back. All right, well, don't even worry about it, okay. There's something disingenuous with what they've already started with, whether it's, okay, I, it may be a rumor that they have a medical background. I hope to God they don't have a medical background or this is a really scary video because uh, the larger point would be that uh, Mike of Inspiring Philosophy was discussing, was discussing scientific studies, which yeah. means the only rational use of the term would be the medical clinical definition of, 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 of delusion. That would be the only responsible application. If these people are in any way in the medical field or, or even the scientific professions, they should have their credentials double checked because <laughs> there's a real problem there. Um, uh, we were, Mike was discussing scientific papers and that would definitionally default to a medical definition and in fact he was using medical papers and, and nothing but, but science. So you're, you're full of crap right off the bat. This was, I remember re looking at this now and going, this thing is disingenuous from the moment they open their mouths. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's obvious. I mean, uh, when I uh, first watched the beginning of this, I had to rewatch the, like, the first two minutes of it to understand what he's saying going off to saying that delusion is used at in this general de deposition, et cetera, et cetera. All of the things that IP uses and all of the research we have found that it has one common factor, a false idea of belief. And it, it seems like they're reading too deep into, mess, into inspired philosophy words and they're being quite nitpicky again. Yeah. It, 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 I, I, I mean, 
it's it stinks oh, of ahead. street epistemology. It stinks of street epistemology. Go ahead, Rob. No, uh, the point uh, IP makes over and over and over is that if, if you want uh, videos arguing for the rationality of theism, he has he has dozens or hundreds of them. But uh, uh, so this video is not about that. If that's what you want, he has other videos about that. This is about is 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 theism an abnormal uh, belief, the result of a, of, of a you know abnormal brain function or something. Uh, but this is what I've noticed about atheists is that every game they want they they just want to get you back on their turf. They want to be back in familiar territory, and that that to them is. Try to convince me that God exists so I can swat away re your reasons. Yeah, I, so yeah. And they always try right. to get right back into that territory. Okay, it's your duty to convince me that God exists or, or else you're not even allowed to discuss anything else. Because, right. because you, are obligated, you are obligated at every instant to convince me that God exists so I can swat away your reasons, yes. Right, and when in reality we have no obligation to convince them of anything. Yes. Uh, even, even within the Christian religion, while you do have these annoying evangelicals who proselytize that everybody hates, um, it's, it's, it is not a requirement on Christians at all to chase you around and, and make you believe. Sorry, yeah. it's just not. And, uh, uh, or, or at and least we have no burden of proof to the atheist either. We have no burden of proof of any kind at any time for any reason. Do we have any burden of proof to, to the atheist? We just well, do not. There, you're, you're talking about two different things because there's there's the burden of simply providing a reason, of providing evidence, of, of saying why you think. Then there is the burden of, of trying to convince a person who refuses to be convinced. Sometimes just giving your own reasons is the best you can do. But you, there's no guarantee that you're ever going to convince anyone of anything. So that can never be a reasonable burden placed on any believer. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think you, okay. all you could do is like give out reason and hope people, you know, follow it. You know, yeah. everyone else has a choice. Yeah, that, let's that, get back to it. And let, let's get back to it. Mike was not trying to convince you of God here. Yes. Yeah. But of God here. Yeah. yeah you know, it, it, they're being nonsense. God don't understand. And you know, inspired philosophy made clear that he's using delusion, the sense of mental illness, you know, abnormal brain function, something that's unnatural. I mean. How do you not understand that? Yes. I mean, after he made this response video, I understood it clearly. It, it's... Even Sam Harris, who's a horrible pseudoscientist, has tried doing experiments where he tried to prove that there was some kind of weird brain difference and he could never get anything particularly convincing. Um, the, the whole idea that, that, that religion is a delusion is pseudoscience. It has no support in the scientific literature. There, oh. how you like that? It really the, the idea that religion is delusional has no support in the scientific literature. Yeah, by, I, the way, by the way, this is this is an aside, but do you guys remember the God helmet? It, it God. was the helmet that was going to stimulate our brain lobes and induce mystical experiences and convince everyone that mystical experiences no. are false. No. Whatever no, happened with that? Whatever happened? It got a whole bunch of press a few years ago, and then they found out uh, uh, again. Basically, I think I think uh, Richard Dawkins took it. He had some some sort of a placebo effect, and then they just figured out it didn't work, and it was com it was completely forgotten about. But of course, the uh, the oh, British, sure. all the British. You know what else is like, forgotten? Oh, this is yeah. going to prove that mystical experiences aren't real. And you know course, what else is forgotten? What else is forgotten is is Richard Dawkins. Uh, atheists, when things don't go their way, they 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 erase history, make sure it doesn't happen. Yeah. Richard Dawkins is a, should be and and is in many ways a scientific laughing stock for something called mimetic theory. Yes. Now he withdrew it. He gave up with on it years ago, but uh, he ran for decades with it, and it was always pseudoscientific garbage. That basically, religion was like a mind virus. Yes. Although what I've noticed in the in the online atheist community, especially um, is on atheists in general, they really do think they'll get God cooties if they talk to you. <laughs> but they can't be that serious, really. Well, I don't mean literally. Um, I just mean they act like it, though. Like really, like oh, like Jesus might act rub like off it. on you. But Jesus might rub off on you, and you'll just kind of. It'll be like you know mystique in 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 X Men, and you'll just be covered in Jesus oh. and become one of us or something. I don't know. I oh, get like that my of people, you know. I mean, you know, I was friends with atheists before I I looked towards theism, you know, and I never thought I would just turn into one. I mean, I, I've had atheist friends, yeah, 
you know, before I even heard about atheists on YouTube, you know, I actually didn't think atheists were that bad until I saw them on YouTube. Yeah. And I <laughs> I, I, oh, where do you get I so them on any social media? But you'll meet them in real life in parts of the country, too, and they're just like that. It's very scary. Hmm. I, I must have met like the few good ones, I guess. I don't know, but I anyways, used to be uh, an atheist, and I have athe have atheist friends. I hang out with a couple of atheists. They find us funny, <laughs> and they get the point we're making because they can look at it too and go, "God, so many of these atheists are so awful and stupid." They yeah. get it, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, exactly. let's watch a little more. I don't know if I'm going to make it through all 15 minutes of this. My cutoff is usually an hour, just so you know. Yeah, that, that's a good cutoff. Okay. Uh, let's, these, uh, guys let's don't, just, these, guys, these guys already don't deserve a whole hour anyway, so let's yeah. just get what we get to. Right, okay, so yeah, let's uh, go through this one really quick, yeah. Or belief would be considered a delusion, whether due to mental illness or not. And a mental illness which results in an idea or belief that is accurate would not be considered a delusion. So the use of the words in his response video or his first video makes no sense given what he claims the term was intended to mean. But even if we ignore the fact that all standard definitions, mental illness or not, are based on the concept of false belief, and instead just give him the definition which refers to abnormal brain function without false belief, which we probably shouldn't do, but the video would be rather short if we didn't. So let's just, to humor IP, we'll just keep it going. He <laughs> makes no effort to him. Oh my God, just make him stop. <laughs> First off, this is, again, I'm going to go back to the phrase gish gallop. Uh, atheists gish gallop all the time. Look that up in Rational Wiki sometime, gish galloping. Yeah. This is what he's doing. And, what, and, and, and I smell somebody who's studied street epistemology um, because they love just constantly playing word games and shifting word definitions around and building these complex arguments of air because they're just shifting their words around. This man isn't saying anything because here's the bottom line. He's disproven on both points. If we go to the medical definition, uh, Mike has already, in the inspiring philosophy video, has already demonstrated that religion is not a delusion. Um, it simply isn't. And if you go to the idea that it's simply a false idea, then you're, you're, you're declaring yourself able to, uh, you know, you get to determine what all false ideas are somehow because yeah. you're atheist. Like, you know, if I believe uh, Donald Trump is a bad president, is that a false idea that you can call a delusion? What if I believe he's a good president? Is that a false idea you could call an illusion? What's the difference? You have nothing here if you're reducing to this stupid, a false idea. Well, well yeah, and... Uh you know, this is where a lot of atheists would say, you know, inspiring philosophy is using the general definition of delusion because he's not being clear. But if he's going by, you know, studies and medical research on, you know, what devolution means, I'm going to guess it has something to do with like mental illness or something that's either natural or natural to our own cognitive way of thinking. And he yeah. made it very clear at the beginning of his first video, is there scientific research to show if uh, theist is unnatural? He said that at the beginning. So how is yeah. that not clear enough? Yeah. So anyways, let's continue on here. At how he defines the words in this first video. Now, whilst looking at the contextual usage should make it clear, when you look at his original video, it doesn't. The definition would change based on which part of his video you take. For example, at the very start of his first video, when he mentions the questions atheists ask him, check this clip out. I've encountered many atheists who've asked me similar questions. Do you really believe there is a God, or do you just want there to be a God? Did you just invent a delusion to make yourself feel comfortable? Believing something due to a desire for comfort would not qualify as a mental illness, or be the result of abnormal brain function. Later in his video, he attempts to flip the script on atheism, and then mentions that it requires hard cognitive work to overcome theistic tendencies, as you can see here. Wait, now, now he's using no, he right. the definition when as a result of abnormal brain function. Well, this is where I got him because he's, he seems to have just conceded here that there's nothing about abnormal brain function. Yeah. Um, so he seems to have conceded that either way. So I'm not sure why he bothered with the four first half of the of video. Um, now, I, now it's like he wants to – it seems like he's trying to avoid suggesting that atheism is a conclusion. Mm. It's, I, I, that's my take is that he's trying to get away from the idea that atheism is a conclusion. Um, and that there may be something, you know, 
cognitive. I actually do believe there's something to this. Like being an atheist is like forcing yourself to believe two plus two equal five. You can only do it so long. Yeah. In the face. Yeah, that's of what the studies. Yeah, that, I'm sorry to cut you off, but that's exactly what the study's been saying. That it goes against our cognitive way of thinking. It's very hard to accept. You know, atheism, it, the belief in it, is very unnatural. That's what yeah. the study's been saying, and that's what he's been saying. So, it, what yeah. you just said is exactly true. Yeah, go ahead. And so he seems to be wanting to get away from that. But to do that, he's going to have to get away from the idea that atheism is an idea at all. And I, I'm afraid it is, because once you are, the very first time you are confronted with the God concept, you know, the ultimate thing running everything, Yeah. Um, you get a yes, no on that. I'm sorry, you can't atomize, you can try atomizing away or not, but is it a rational idea or not? Does it intuitively make sense or not? And it's it's fair game to study. They seem don't, don't seem to think we should be able to study it. Yeah, well, that, that, that's the thing. They always say they always say, well, you know, uh, you know, babies and frogs and whatever are atheists. Well, let's say there's like a wild child who was discovered and he's never heard of God before, and he, and you tell him about God, he's not going to say, oh, that's that's just a fairy tale. That's not going to be his first response. His first response is going to be, well, tell me more. Let me know more about this so I can form a judgment. You know? No, well, I yeah. think he would immediately look at us and say. I lack beliefs. Prove your extraordinary claim. I lack beliefs. Prove your extraordinary claim. You might as well believe the flying teapot. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay, let's continue on here. Study. Pascal Boyer equally states that disbelief is generally the result of deliberate, effortful work against our natural cognitive dispositions, hardly the easiest ideology to propagate. Noren Zayan and Gervais recently said that disbelief requires some hard cognitive work to reject or override the intuitions that nourish religious beliefs. If atheism was a delusion, which you should note, the title of this first video is, Is Atheism a Delusion? Using cognitive effort to overcome natural instincts would not qualify as a mental illness, nor as abnormal brain function, which makes his claim nonsensical given this is how he is claiming to define delusion. Ah. So if it was real, it would oh. Yeah. All right. Fair point. Uh, uh, fair point. Um, while I did take Mike's is atheism a delusion question rhetorically, you, you really can cognitively believe there's no God and not be insane or deluded. Mm. Fair point. You can right. be not insane or deluded. Now, I do think the more one contemplates the concept, it, it, it causes growing cognitive dissonance um, to just keep finding 50 bazillion ways to avoid it, you know, yeah. concluding that there's a God. But, I mean, it's not impossible to rational be rational. I don't think atheism is a mental illness, but I do think it makes you squirrely the yeah. longer you're an atheist. I really do. <laughs> and it's also, we also need to point out again that like almost every other video on his channel is dedicated to uh, demonstrating the falsity of atheism. So it, it doesn't need to be addressed in this video. It's just taking the assumption of, uh, taking the conclusion of every other video on his channel along with the, uh, with the uh, kind of uh, uh, claim that, that, that it's due to result of abnormal brain activity, then, then you can call it a, a, a delusion. Well, yeah, um, I mean, the uh, whole point that Metsock Manic, I'm oh, sorry, not Metsock Manic, sorry, the Rational Channel, oh, sorry, not that too, I'm sorry, um, Matt, Inspiring Philosophy, when he made this video, um, yeah, the whole show is that atheism keeps saying, well, it's not enough to convince me, and he said, well, fine, I'm going to do a video, you know, to show that you're lying, because anyone should be able to watch this, and then should be able to easily accept it, or, you know, be interested in it, you know, make a clear judgment, and when they deny it, it certainly shows it goes against their cognitive thinking, because we're born you know, naturally with this idea to fall theism. And I know there are some people can grow up like an atheist, you know, and not just be like, you know, like a middle of atheist, you know. But the whole point of what Spiral Philosophy is saying is that, you know, atheism goes against our cognitive thinking, you know. It goes against it completely. It's completely unnatural. That should be a pretty clear sign of what Spiral Philosophy is trying to tell. Yeah. Yeah, it is, and and this is one of the reasons, I mean, there's a mountain of data behind this, too, and there's a mountain of data behind the fact that when you put atheists in charge of, of political, when you give them political power, I mean, it's, it's not a given that they're all going to turn evil, but look at the objective data on the atheist dictators, 
and the officially atheist or at least anti-religious governments of the last century, it's hideous. Yeah. And so, you know, simply speaking in a sci from a scientific, clinical, philosophical perspective, it is entirely justified for the non-atheist majority to examine the atheist phenomenon scientifically and otherwise and, and see what conclusions we draw. And uh, when I look at it, there is also ample abundant evidence that atheists, um, uh, again, um, higher rate of depression, higher rate of obesity, believe it or not, higher rate of suicide, um, a higher rate of incarceration, it does turn out. Um, mm -hmm. Earlier, uh, anything you've ever seen that uh, they were less likely to be criminal? Um, no, those were jiggered studies looking at basically college graduates. Um, blew the curve. A more realistic assessment shows atheists are more likely to be criminal and go to jail. Yeah. Um, the, the when I say people, you're better off as a Hindu. I mean it. Um, just just medically, it looks like you're better off as a philosophical theist. It, 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 aside from anything else. Yeah. Um, you know, and and. Uh, you're going to be a Stoic, fine, be a Stoic. Read Marcus Aurelius. He didn't even like Christians, I don't think, but he had a lot of great things to say about God anyway that are not that far from what Christians think. Um, ditto Socrates, all those people. Um, the Tao is very compatible with Christian thinking. Much Confucianism is. You just, it's amazing how much you lock out. I mean, sure, I'm Christian. I'd like you to be Christian, but I'm not here to do that. In fact, I'm not an evangelical, but really man the, the it takes like intense lack focused lack of interest to get away from the idea of god it really does fucking read yeah. confucius please <laughs> <laughs> read the Tao, please you know i mean sorry what well atheists always always kind of pose it like like uh religious belief is like we're ju we're just spinning this big roulette wheel and no matter what we land on we just have to believe that everything else is horseshit no it doesn't work like that we can recognize that there are a lot of valid re religions, that there are a lot of, uh, of valid points in other religions. And uh, it, do it doesn't mean believing that everyone else is literally retarded, just as you believe every other religion is literally retarded. Yeah, I'm so sick of that 4,000 gods or 4,000 yeah. religions, why is yours correct? Listen, some have more truth than others. Yes. You and then they're not all mutually exclusive either. So. Right. Exactly. Exactly. All right. You go to a Let's Catholic church in, in you go to a Catholic church in India. There may be some Hindu stuff in there. Yeah. Right. Anyways, so let's get let's get back to the video and finish it up. Yeah. Qualify for the general definition of delusion. He expands on this a bit more in this next clip. It is in fact atheists whose beliefs are unnatural, and the data leads to a strong possibility their beliefs are actually the ones that are delusions. So in return to the atheist who asks, "Do we really believe in our religion?" Yes, and we have the science to back it. In fact, it appears atheism is the unnatural belief that people have to force themselves to accept. Perhaps atheists have invented their beliefs to delude themselves into thinking there is no higher power to tell them how to live. Perhaps it's it to think they don't have to worry about uh, it. Yes. Yeah, I was saying that statement by, by uh, Mike there is a little cheap. You know, perhaps yeah. atheists have invented their beliefs, but at the same time, wait a minute, I got to back up and say, no, he's looking at this scientifically. So it's valid to put on the table as one of the possible causes of atheism. I think there are others. Um, yeah. I know for a fact when I was an atheist, fearing the God judging me was not really at all on my list of why I didn't believe. I mean, a little, but no, not really. I, I, I hated the, the primitive ideas of hell and all that, but the... No, but but you know what? There may be some people who are like that. Max and I have talked about this a lot, and, and I believe that that in, in 2017 at least, uh, 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 atheism is, is a great source of, of, of validation and, and kind of feeling like people are in a group and, and having people kind of flatter each other and kind of you know mutual appreciation of society. So I think that that's a big draw to atheism in, in our, our current situation. But, and Max and I talk about this, but when we do so, we always qualify it as like, this is our opinion, this is maybe influencing people to come to atheism. We're not saying atheism is wrong for this reason. Right. Right, right. okay. Yeah. yeah.
Let's, uh, let's go. Um, anyway, I do think that, uh, you know, an important thing we've always been facing atheists, especially certain ones that are maybe young or whatever, vulnerable because they've had bad experiences. They may just be genuinely confused, um, but a lot of it today is just so ideological. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Judge later on for their actions, and they can do whatever they please now. The way he has used delusion in that section would not fit with the term mental illness or abnormal brain function either. Believing something due to wishful thinking or using effort to overcome your cognitive biases would not be a mental illness and would only fit the general definition of delusion, a false belief or idea. Weirdly enough, in his response video, he doesn't even seem to differentiate this. See this next clip. And what I'm actually I, I, saying... I, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know if we even need to finish this video. Um, he's just missed the point again. Um, the suggestion is that it's cognitively difficult to sustain the idea that there's nothing spiritual. It's just, yeah. it's just that simple, that it's, that it's difficult. Not that it is a mental illness, um, yeah. but it, that, it, that it really yeah. is a state of cognitive dissonance to be in. And I can tell you as somebody who snapped out of it, and did not have that, oh, amazing altar call, come to Jesus moment. I merely went, snap, and I like, oh, I really believe in God. It was because the concept finally clicked into my head. Mm -hmm. That's all, yeah. you know. Um, and I had been wrestling with it for so long. And frankly, I'd been wrestling with it because I'd heard so many conflicting things about it, you know. But anyway. Um, I don't think they think it, I don't think guys that he was saying it's a mental illness, but it does appear to be a cognitive abnormality that's hard to sustain and people do have well, those. Well, yeah, and that's the whole point. He, I mean, I, once again, it's my philosophy natural. That's the key, unnatural. And uh, I don't know where this whole idea. Yeah, I guess, yeah, cognitive abnormality. Let me just say it, a cognitive an idea that you can't sustain. I didn't mean abnormality in the clinical sense, sorry. A cognitive <laughs> An idea that you really can't hold in your head, but you're trying to anyway. Right. And, uh, you know, they try to say that wishful thinking wouldn't be a result of that. But there are some cases where wishful thinking can be a result of that if you're trying to accept something that's nearly impossible. I mean, right. wishful thinking can be followed in, like, one of the five, five stages, you know, of den denial. Um, you know, like, you know, you're denying yourself an, an obvious truth, something like that, you know. Wishful thinking can be abnormal. But what general definition, again, you know, they're trying to... Right, just words. like somebody trying to pretend they but, didn't cheat on their wife or somebody trying to pretend they didn't steal that money that, that benefited them 20 well, years yeah, ago. Yeah. Same, kind of, same kind of, I'm trying not yeah, to... Been, you hit your kid way too hard one time and you're trying to pretend that never happened. You know, so, anything like that. Yeah. Same kind of thing. Yeah. Would like, eventually the cognitive dissonance gets to you. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. I mean, they're using wishful thinking as like a person like uh, doing something to uh, think of like he can, a person can achieve something and do something really good, you know, having hope. Yeah, but then there's wishful thinking that could be used in a very different direction. And it's very obvious that IP is trying to show that, but they're they're switching. They're, 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 they're playing dumb. They're trying to think they don't understand what IP is saying, so they're just going to try to make him look like an idiot. But mm. in the long run, it's making them look bad. But. Anyways, let's continue on. Let's let's. I'd like to re recommend we we finish this within the next ten minutes or so. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah. Let's, let's, let's try get through the video or not. Let's just see what we get. Okay. These beliefs are caused by God. All it shows us is they are not the result of unnatural delusions or of wishful thinking. Wishful thinking is not a mental illness or a result of any abnormal brain function. Oh, there we and go. Hence, is in contradiction to his proposed death. Oh shoot. Video just stopped right now. I'm sorry. This, this has been happening lately, but yeah, yeah. They he he seems to be going out of his way to want to say uh, I don't know. He, he's very defensive, is what he is. Um, this is the kind of thing again. When I was an atheist, if somebody presented me with the this this data, I probably would have said, hmm, yes, this may be cognitively abnormal. Um, in fact, I did at one time conclude, yes, I'm an atheist and I recognize this is odd about me. Now, is it because I'm smarter, wiser, braver, whatever, than other humans? And once I rejected that, that's a big part of what got me just going, okay, maybe I'm missing something. I need to look a little harder. Yeah, well, um, that's, it goes to the very heart of, 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 the kind of, of the kind of naturalistic worldview is that is that – 
obviously, if, if 95 plus percent of, of whatever, uh, of humanity uh, believes in some form of God, uh, it, it is natural. Uh, and and it, just like all kind of common features, features that are commonly shared, we would assume that uh, in a Darwinian sense, there's some evolutionary advantage to it. So yeah, this why, is exactly why, what I concluded. Why, yeah. why, why does Dawkins come and say we must somehow override uh, our, our own, uh, our own uh, evolutionary programming, you know? Exactly. That was the exact question I asked myself that got me to conclude there was a problem. Yeah. And I, 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 even still, when I approached it early on, it was still like, well, I'm still going to investigate in this in terms of psychological benefit you can derive, you know, but six of one, half a dozen of the other. Be careful. When you get genuinely curious, gentlemen, and you have to be really pretty incurious to stay atheist, is my experience. Yes. Genuinely curious and start, you know, looking, well, why would I believe anything operates outside the natural world? Well, son, actually, once you start looking, you know, once you really look at that, there's plenty of evidence. Yes. This is yeah. why I like to say all atheists, atheists, you're the most boring people on planet Earth. You're not yeah. only pretty predictable, but you're boring. I've had big arguments with Hindus, but at least they were interesting. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I've had arguments with witches that were at least interesting. Yes. I, I, <laughs> that, no, no, that's what we say about, about atheists is, is that not, it's, it's, not, it's not bad enough that they're not only capable of, they're not only incapable of making an intelligent point, they're incapable of, of at least making a dumb point that's at least interesting, you know? Right. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. uh, I got the video. It's starting to load up again. Let's. let's, 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 let's I don't. Oh. I don't want, all right. All right. One more minute, but I really don't want to keep watching. <laughs> well, I I kind of I kind of wanted you to watch this and then watch Messianic Manic because I thought you'd get a kick out of it. But um, if you <laughs> yeah, can't, I, 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 I think Messianic Manic is going to be more of the same. But yeah. Why don't we do Messianic Manic another time? We're coming up on an hour here, and I don't like to go over an hour. I do think we've given this guy all he deserves. Um, <laughs> these guys. I. They're incoherent. Yeah. I mean, they, they just figure out what you want to say. You ought to be able to look at this video and diagram it and go, I wasn't doing anything but trying to argue through the whole thing. Mm. He has no fixed point. Right. Um, it's, it's funny because the thing here, when they're going through all this entire video, they're, they're not arguing the, the studies that inspire philosophy is uh, going through. They're arguing against, you know, how you define delusion. That's how desperate they are. Yeah, yeah. It's, but anyways, yeah, let's watch the next here. They invented a delusion about what I said. Even here, he accuses us of inventing a delusion about what he said. That is using the general definition of delusion, i.e. believing in something that is false. It wouldn't even make sense in this sentence if he was keeping consistent with his definitions and hence was claiming it was due to a mental illness. We can't just voluntarily induce a symptom of mental illness within ourselves. Abnormal brain function is involuntary by definition. Now, pay attention to the start of his follow-up video. Yeah. Yeah. That's, not at all ahead, that's not at all self-evident that we can't induce mental illness in ourselves. Yeah, it's not at well, all self-evident that we can't induce mental illness in ourselves. In fact, I'd say we have good reason to believe that we can, but yes. I don't think he was suggesting atheism is a mental illness, but I'll tell you what, man, the more I listen to you talk, the more I wonder if it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Holy shit, man. It, it, it's yeah. galloping. <laughs> Of uh, like neuroplasticity is that is that is that our, our our thoughts shape our 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 neurological structures? I mean, if if yeah. we think in a certain way, it seems that we could uh, induce some sort of neurological, you know, psychological changes in ourselves. It is that is a known it's medical fun. fact that that, that 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 thought patterns will change the actual wiring configuration in your brain. Yeah. That's a medical fact. And by the way, it's also a medical fact that there's no current scientific explanation for that at all, mm. um, or yeah. how, how it's possible that the brain does that, which, by the way, points to the possible existence of a mind that is outside yes. the laws of physics, e i.e. a right. soul. Yes. There is evidence for it. <laughs> so mm. uh, uh, the thing is, is that 
I almost thirst for the day that everybody gives up on the atheism thing, and now everybody wants to be polytheists so I can start arguing with them. But, <laughs> you know, this is just literally the universe is – there are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your poor philosophy. Yes. You guys are in a mind box. There's a whole universe of ideas. You just shut yourself up. Yeah. Uh, if you will restart the Stoic religion, I will donate money just so you'll be somebody more interesting to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> it goes back. I, I love the, the the David Bentley Hart quote where where he says that that naturalism is not a fact of experience and it's not a logical deduction. And so it's simply a metaphysical prejudice. And as far as metaphysical prejudices go, it's just about the least rational, you know? It, right. really, it really is. And it's out of gas, too. Yeah. Yeah. I really think we should. I don't think we owe these guys any more time, Tom. I okay. think that's we <laughs> all we need to say here with these guys. I'll come back for another one if you want to do the other video sometime. Mm. I don't mind. Okay, then, uh, Rob, is it all right if you join me to continue up this video? I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'll, okay, I'll stick around for a little, for a little while longer. Yeah, all yeah. Right. Then, well, yeah well, so thank you, I'm Max. I'm going to go ahead and drop out, and you all have a great time, okay? God bless. Okay. Have a good okay. night, Max. God bless. Thank you. thank you. Bye. Okay, Rob, well, there's also another thing I want to try to understand here. You know, as far as philosophy, in this definition, he said in the, in the context of the video saying normal delusion, but then what is inspired philosophy not allowed to use different definitions if he defines them differently? Because now they're saying it just confuses me. But then well, again, you know. Yeah, well, I, I wasn't really paying attention to what, to what uh, 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 the rational channel was saying. Uh, <laughs> Because you cut you cut off of the thing where where I, I couldn't get the context of what he was responding to. But yeah, as long as long as IP makes it clear what definition he's using, there shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, that that that's true. Um, we're gonna finish this up, and then I'm gonna go to Messiah Mac, and that should be the end of it here. So let's uh, finish it. <laughs> yeah. The point in this particular video was to show theists really do believe God exists. Science shows it is normal with cognitive brain functions. And atheistic beliefs require hard cognitive work that must be forced to be accepted. He doesn't even declare that he was intending to outline that atheism arises from a mental illness or abnormal brain function, making either definition of delusion useless in this circumstance and essentially boiling his video down to a pointless argument that theism occurs within natural brain function, which doesn't fit his title or the actual definition of delusion. <sighs> That's a lie. He's just lying. Yes, I... Look, here's the thing. Don't judge a book by its cover, all right? Look into the context of what it says inside. IP made in his video saying that it's an unnatural delusion. It goes against our cognitive thinking. How many times do we have to say this before these guys that, you know, you know, yeah. actually, that here's the thing. They want IP to be wrong because if they realize he's right on the studies, they realize that, you know, atheism, you know, is basically deluding themselves, at least to these types of atheists, you know? Well, it's another thing, and, and I'll point, there, there are kind of ancillary issues like, like you know, is, is atheism like an abnormal brain function, or is there some historical social tendency towards atheism where, where it, does, it doesn't bear directly on the question of whether or not God exists, but these are, are, are kind of uh, uh, shibboleths that are very important for atheists. So again, like like there was a study that came out last week that showed that atheism uh, uh, halved in the so in uh, in uh, Russia in the last five years. So that contradicts their narrative, even though it doesn't bear. Even though the the percentage of Russians who believe in God doesn't bear directly on the question of whether a God exists, when, when atheists will still resist against those kind of things because it, it contradicts their whole narrative, you know. Right, yeah. Let's uh, let's continue on here. The title of his video and further claims of delusion invalid. The obvious point here is that when IP made his original video, he didn't properly understand the term delusion, or was just desperate to use that word so that his video would get more views. Wishful thinking is not mental illness, and using cognitive effort to overcome implicit biases is not mental illness or abnormal brain function. Inspired philosophy switched between again. definitions in both his original video and his response video and then accused us of an equivocation fallacy, which is just plain dishonest or incompetent, or maybe both. Well, I mean, if you look at Inspired Philosophy's response video, they, they, they did use the equivocation fallacy. Well, not only that, they misquote what, what Inspired Philosophy meant. 
they, they, and here's the thing, and, and in their video, they don't mention any mistakes they made, what Inspiring Philosophy point out, you know. They just go on with, you know, arguing about definition. A whole yeah. video about definition, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's how ridiculous it's getting. Even if Inspiring Philosophy was consistent in its original video with this definition of delusion, which it wasn't, his original video becomes virtually meaningless. Religion isn't a mental illness. Okay, fine. When atheists call it a delusion, you haven't done anything to refute their point because the vast majority of atheists mean the general definition when they call your beliefs delusions. This all could have been avoided if he just called his video Our Religious Beliefs a Mental Illness and not touch the word delusion. As an advocate for theism, it is his job to ensure his communication is consistent and clear. He can't possibly believe our response was unjust given how inconsistently and incorrectly he used the term delusion. I, 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 hear, I, hear atheists call, uh, I, I hear atheists call religion a mental illness all the time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, that's what Inspiring Philosophy was referring to when he looked up, the, you know, the, um, the amazing atheists he was pointing to, or, you know, or a lot of other atheists like Richard Dawkins saying that it is a mental illness, you know. Yeah. There are atheists who do say that, and there probably are some who don't, you know, these guys are saying, we think there's just a general delusion. Well, fine. You may think that, but Inspire Philosophy was responding to, you know, someone else's claim. I mean, they're, they're doing any way to argue. I mean, this is yeah. so pathetic. <laughs> yeah. I thought that the pain was over, but then he goes on and says things like this. They claim I said something else, which is not true of the reality of the situation. So they deluded themselves, which was too good to pass up since they only show they would rather invent a delusion than face what reality is telling them. Look, buddy, you can't equivocate the entire time and then blame someone for pointing out your video doesn't work with such inconsistency. Um, oh, really? You know, I, you know, maybe I should point out the flaws they made, like they misunderstood and inspired philosophy, thinking that he was using this to show that God exists. He yeah. didn't use it like that. How about when they were saying that, uh, when they so they were trying to say that inspired philosophy was directly saying that, Atheists are generally ang angry at God. When Spine Philosophy said no, he said perhaps. They didn't even read the context yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah. Well, they didn't even. Oh, well, you know how. <laughs> I mean, it's they made so many critical errors on that video and did, did a lot of quote mining. How about when they misunderstood him, uh, accusing him of a straw man on when he was saying an unnatural delusion? <laughs> they then they said, oh, straw man on that. Mm. It, 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 this is getting well. It, this is this what I'm talking about. They're petty people. They made this video response just so they can sleep with their egos intact because if they have to have last word, that's yeah, what's going Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah it's, it's like so many of other discussions with, with like TMM. He'll, he'll drop anything that's of substance. He'll, he'll forget about it. He'll make a response and he'll drop the, the, uh, anything that was of substance when, when it just, it just becomes me more and more meaningless and more and more non-substantive as the discussion goes on. Yeah, that's true. That's their way of winning the argument, is pretty much shutting it down that's by just making all the stuff yeah. meaningless. Well, it will yeah. become clear that his initial video and defense of that video was dishonest and invalid. We have a good number of other issues with this video, but we don't want to draw this out beyond necessity. If you happen to find any more inconsistencies in this video, or notice some of the ways he dishonestly edited his response, then feel free to post it in the comments. We would love to see if you guys can get them all. Yeah. Oh, he, so now they're claiming that he dishonestly edited his response. Yeah. 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 That's. Yeah. I like. I like. I like to. I'm going to make a video, uh, and it's it's going to be such a a a. a horrible, uh, uh, soul-crushing task. I'm going to make a response where I bring back everything TMM dropped in my, uh, in my discussions with him because he drops like half the things. But that would mean going back like five yeah. videos to, to pick up all those loose ends. So uh, yeah, th there are people on your, on your team who, who are certainly, uh, who are certainly uh, guilty of that. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, so... Anyways, I uh, that, that's the rational channel, and that was that was pretty painful to watch. That's yeah. probably one of the most worst videos I've ever saw. Just, they they just can't admit they were wrong on something. Yeah, yeah. It. Yeah, uh, but uh, anyways, I'm starting off this Masonic Manic one, and no, this shouldn't I, take. I'm, I'm long. sorry. I'm sorry. I think <laughs> the the video is an hour long. I think I think nobody's gonna watch at this point. 
It's it's also okay. Saturday night. It's also Saturday night. It's also Saturday night. So I'm not sure I want to spend Saturday night with uh, TMM. <laughs> not, oh, like, sorry. Well, I, it, it's basically the same topic. And okay, well. <laughs> yeah, that's what I, said. Sure? I suspect it's going to be more of the same because atheists are the most boring people on earth, and they just they just get their talking points and they repeat them. But right, yes. And, uh, no, that's that's okay. I just figured on Jahan thought I should do this because it was a, a good idea, you know, to um, do this because it's on the same topic. But uh, I guess everyone sees the point. Maybe we'll do it in the next response. Who knows? Okay. Right? Okay. When, yeah. when, when he, when he can get on this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll try to. Uh, Jahan just doesn't feel like this is his type of kind of topic. But uh, yeah. But okay. Well. Anyways. Uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, Tune in and, uh, next time for Okinawa Podcast. No problem, man. Uh, anyways, thank you, Rob. Uh, have a nice night. Everyone have a good night. God bless. Yeah, see ya.